Welcome to Disso Systems 3D Experience Forum. My name is Daniel Newman. I'm the principal analyst at Futurum Research. I'm joined today by Thomas Marchand. Thomas is the CEO at Biomodix, and we're excited to have you here for this little conversation. How are you today, Thomas? I'm fine, thanks, Dan. So, tell everybody out there who may not already know a little bit about your company, Biomodix. Sure. Um, Biomodix is the French American startup. Uh, we are based in Paris for the R&D in Boston for everything about marketing and sales. And uh, we are enhancing um, the clinical training and predicting what would be the best operation for every single patient thanks to simulators that allows the surgeon to train the day before the operation on a digital twin of his patient. So that's super fascinating and obviously taking us forward in personalized medicine. now. I have a couple more questions for you, but before I ask you, I, I just have to know, you put some props on the table in front of us here, and I, maybe they're not props. Tell us a little bit about what you have here on the table. Yeah, absolutely. So to talk about the, the 3D printing industry in the life sense, what, what is the value of 3D printing? So you can have two main things. The first one is uh, being able to produce, to manufacture some very complex shapes. So let's look at this organ of the patient that has, has been done from the CT scan of uh, the patient. So, so that's a specific patient. What am I looking at? Tell everybody out yeah. there what they're looking at. You're looking at the brain artery of the patient. This is the carotid, just right here. And you can see here the brain arteries and with multiple aneurysms, that is pathology. And so you can see here that the 3D printing technology allows us to manufacture very, very complex shapes, right? Um, that not any other manufacturing you know, technology allows us to do. So this is actually a specific patient. This isn't just a, a generic thing that we're looking at here. Absolutely. This is, this is Susie, for example, right? Okay. And so the surgeon is training the day before the operation. The day before the operation. Okay. And I was saying that that's the first value of 3D printing, it being able to manufacture very complex things, right? The second value of 3D printing is being able to do bespoke things for a fraction of the cost of other manufacturing, you know, technologies. So there is no price difference between doing a thousand different organs than doing a thousand same organs. So this is one of the value of 3D printing. And the, it, it makes sense uh, when you're talking about life science because every single human is different, right? So you can see here another patient and what you can see is that there is a huge difference between these two patients, even if it's exactly the same anatomy, exactly the same place inside the, the brain and uh, exactly the same pathology of the patient. So once you have this uh, 3D printed organ, the surgeon just has to plug it inside what we call the station. So this station reproduces the, the blood flow inside the artery. And so it can train, it can plan the operation the day before the operation to know exactly how to treat the patient on the D-Day. And it can save some time. He, he makes, um, it's less risky. Uh, so it's, it's way better and you have a better clinical outcome at the end of the day. So, just for everyone out there that might be, what we're really looking at here is a, is a digital twin. What we are seeing is this is as like the real surgery as you can come as ever before. So, whereas, you know, a doctor may have gone to medical school and worked on a cadaver, that particular cadaver could be completely different than a patient. This is the patient, so they will have almost a real experience of doing that operation on that patient before they make the first incision or cut the next day. Yeah, absolutely. Because the, the problem today is that the only way to plan a surgery is to watch the medical images and to think about it, you know, and to try to reconstruct in the head of the surgeon what is the 3D shape. It's very complicated to do. Or even to look at just the screen and try to figure out what would be the best way to treat the patient. So now we're adding the visual thing so they can see the whole organ of the patient and analyze what would be the best approach, the best strategy for every single patient. 
and moreover, they can train uh, so they can feel exactly the same haptic feedback when they are training. Why? Because we have a technology that is based on biomechanics. So basically, we go from the computational modeling science that we have using the, for example, Simulia suite of DESO systems, and then we are 3D printing this FEA model, this computational model, um, to make it react exactly just like inside the body of the patient. This is our technology that is in VivoTech. So that was the biggest challenge of Biomedex, to really reproduce all the, the behaviors of the organ in vivo. Now, how are doctors, right? So I understand as technologists, like me, I'm fascinated, I'm blown away, this is, this is great. But doctors maybe that went through medical training kind of were, you know, there's a very systematic way they do it. This is disruptive to Absolutely. the system. How are hospital systems, doctors, uh, medical centers, universities re responding to what you guys are doing and to this concept of the digital twin for uh, healthcare development? Just like you, they're blown away, right? And uh, we're really um, a key stakeholder of the, of the treatment of the patient, and we have really a multi-value proposition. Not only for the doctor, that is more comfortable because it's better for him to operate in knowing exactly what is the right operation for every single patient, but it's, it's better for the patient, for the clinical outcomes. It makes sense as well for the hospitals because they have less complications, they have, um, less adverse events, that's the word for complication in the hospitals, and there is a huge value for the medical device industry as well, because we can help the medical device industry, like big companies like j, &J Medtronic, Abbott Life Science, for example, to go on the market to educate surgeons on a new medical device, providing them a training solution, patient-specific training solution, for them to push their product on the market and make physician totally comfortable with a new medical device. Yeah, I have to imagine also from a, uh, a dollars and cents, from a business side, right, that the hospital healthcare systems, they have to be excited about, about yeah. this because there's two sides of this, right? One, training cost reduction, and, and again, I'm speculating, you're the experts, you can tell me, but immediately I see cost of, of training going down because they're able to the 3D printing right. is got to be less expensive than other methods in the past. And, and there also has to be some sort of impact on insurance on, because the quality of medicine, and, and I know it's maybe speculative to talk about you know, malpractice and defense, but you know, the more personalized medicine, the more prepared they are, the less likely something goes wrong. Doesn't that protect the hospital from a lot of those potentially? And I know yeah. you can't, you're only speculating too, but doesn't it give them some protection? Yeah, this is all about simulation, right? Um, simulation makes sense in every single space. Um, on the automotive space makes sense, on the aeronautic space, and actually the, the most advanced space that is uh, involved in, in simulation these years is really um, aeronautic space. Um, they have simulators and one hour spent for um, um, for an aviator, right, on, on, a, on a simulator is equals an hour on a real plane. So they're really, really into simulation. But let's go back about the costs in your question about the cost and the savings we can help the hospital, right? So you have to know that the price of one minute, the cost of one minute in the operation room in an American hospital is an average of $62 per minute, excluding the physicians and every paramedical people that are working inside this operation room. So let's say that thanks to simulation, you can go quicker and you can drive all these decisions that the surgeon has to make during the operation before the operation. So in the operation room, it goes quicker. So if you can save like on a four hours operation, maybe one hour, it makes huge saving for the hospital. So it makes sense for the hospital to buy this solution. And so this is very interesting because we're really thinking about different business models right now. So like I said, for the medical device industry standpoint, they have this um, you know, uh, market access um, stake. Uh, for the hospital, like I said, it's like cost savings and time savings. And for the insurance as well, this is very interesting for them because we can do a business model of risk sharing, for example. So this is very exciting, but we are just at the start. Um, in 2017, we are 
printing a thousand organs for a thousand patients. So we are the most advanced company in this space of pre-op planning, and um, we 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 will really think about what is the best business model to work and to be a stakeholder of the patient care. So uh, before we wrap, I just got to ask, how long before this goes mainstream? Three years, five years, what's your, what's your best guess? I think that the, our vision is really to have 10% of the most complicated cases in interventional cardiology um, in 2022. That's our vision and we really need to drive the adoption of the technology thanks to the key opinion leaders. So we are really working with the surgeons like Professor Moray, uh, Professor Cribier, or Ren Granada in the US based in New York from the CRF um, um, Society of Cardiology. Um, and we really need these guys to help us to educate the market and to show the value of pre-op planning before an operation. All right. Well, Thomas Marchand, Biomotics, very, very interesting. Thank you so much for spending a little time. I appreciate it. Thank very you very much. much, Dan. Thank you.